part of the discussion about this course analysis we are going to uh, discuss the basics of conversation analysis because this course analysis means that we are going to analyze a text it can be in written form it can be in oral form whether it is in written form or whether it is in oral form the analysis of that that what actually is the meaning of that the meaning beyond the sentence that is called this course analysis and in the first part with reference to a text analysis we have discussed uh, cohesion and then there was uh, coherence then there were uh, speech events now whereas uh, these speech events are concerned they are uh, not only a part of uh, text analysis but they are also a part of this conversation analysis now whereas this uh, conversation analysis with <coughs> reference to discourse analysis is concerned uh, we are uh, going to discuss certain concepts which are part of this conversation analysis in discourse analysis the very first thing is uh, turn uh, taking and before this uh, whereas uh, speech events are concerned mean that uh, who are you uh, to uh, who are you you are who are you uh, who is a speaker and the person whom you are talking to and then the place of conversation the manner of conversation then uh, that circumstance in which that conversation is being done so all these things are very important and then uh, there is this turn taking means the in, in the way in which each speaker uh, takes a turn mean that when uh, there is a discussion about any topic there are so many people uh, there uh, they were involved in that discussion so each and every person speaks when he is needed so turn taking means that you must know that when you must say something that's called turn taking and if you are uh, for an interview so you are, go are going to be asked questions so when you are asked a question then you must speak otherwise you must uh, remain silent so turn taking means that Uh, you must wait for the person to stop and then you must uh, start your talking and one must be clear about this that this concept of turn taking because if he is not aware about turn taking there is going to be a problem that is called distortion of the conveying of messages because when you are talking to any other person and there is a conversation between two person and the other person is going to say something and you are going to interrupt that person so that is not turn taking it means that you are creating disturbance so this is the very first thing turn taking then uh, second thing is uh, with reference to saying something and also with reference to discourse and also that is uh, the cooperative principle means uh, your conversation must follow the rules of logic according to the situation your conversation you are saying something first of all you must be clear about the thing which you want to say then about the persons who are listening you then about the situation uh, you are having uh, at that time in which you are speaking the circumstances when you have uh, kept all these thing in mind it mean that now you are following the rules of logic and reason you are not uh, talking haphazardly so this is these are called cooperative principles so where are these cooperative principle concerned uh, they have four maxims mean that uh, when you are talking to any person uh, in your life at any place uh, you must keep in mind three things the very first maxim is uh, these are not uh, three things rather these are uh, four things these are four maxims the very first thing is that is called quantity maxim quantity maxim mean that say as much as required because whenever you are talking to any person and you are saying more than that and when you are saying um, more than that it means that you are going to distort the situation say what is necessary this is called Uh, the quantity maxim or this is a part of cooperative principle then the other one is called the quality maxim quality maxim mean that do not say about which you are not sure whether true or false the very first thing say what is necessary what is required do not say too much than demand of the situation and uh, do not say anything about anything about uh, about the thing which you about which you are not clear when you are not sure that the thing or idea i am going to convey or the the thing about which i am talking whether this is true or false when you are confused so you must not say anything this is called quality maxim then the third one is called the relation maxim relation maxim mean that 
uh, you must be relevant, be relevant, don't be irrelevant, whether you are talking to any person, uh, whatever you are uh, doing with reference to conversation, be relevant, irrelevant things, they uh, disturb, they mar the situation and they mar the personality of the person who is speaking. And then uh, there is the fourth one that is called uh, manner maxim. So manner maxim means that one must be clear, one must be brief, and must, must be orderly. Now, whereas the discourse analysis is concerned, uh, this is not uh, only about that we are going to have a discourse analysis in linguistics, uh, and we are going to have it, going to apply it upon different types of literary text and all those things. It means that discourse analysis means that each and every person who is in this universe, because he has to speak. Language is very much important for him or her. If there is a person who is not going to use any language, is or her life ceased to exist. There is no life without language because language is a process of transferring information. It is a conventional way of transferring information. It can be oral, it can be written, it can be symbolic. So when it is a process of transferring information, and each and every person from uh, dawn to dusk or uh, around the clock, he has to say so many words, he has to utter so many sentences, he has to uh, part, take part in different situations, he has to take part in different discussions, and he have to face different people and he has to talk. So every person, uh, whether he is uh, learning this discourse analysis for particular purpose or not, he must have these maxim in his mind, in her mind, because one is the quality maxim that say as much as required because when you say more than that requirement, everything is disturbed, then do not say, do not talk about that thing about which you are not sure because when you are going to talk about anything about which you are not sure whether this is true or false, that is a type of a lie and lie is a sin. And then whenever you are to talk to any person, uh, whoever is the listener, be relevant be to the point. And when you uh, come to know that your silence is not important, why? Because you think that at this time my speaking is very important, then you must speak. Because there are two things. One is to uh, be silent and other is to say something. One must remain silent most of the time because it saves our life, it saves us, it saves our values, it saves our personalities, it increases the grace of our personality. But when we come to know that no, uh, uh, no our speaking is very much important than our uh, being uh, silent, then we must speak. And this is called that be relevant and don't talk about those things about which you are not clear. And then manner measure means that be brief, clear and orderly, orderly and all those people who are clear, their minds are clear about their political thoughts, their minds are clear about their social, moral, ethical and religious thoughts, they are clear about their religion, they are clear about their norms and values, they are clear about their texts, they are clear about their thinkings, whatever they are, they are doing their thinking pattern, they are clear, there must be clarity and any person who has clarity of thought, he can be uh, in the position to convey message in a clear manner and brief and orderly, orderly means that there must be cohesion, there must be coherence, you are not going to be illogical, you must follow a reason, you must follow a logic and brief means that to the point. This, these are the things which are for uh, all the people and then uh, with reference to conversation analysis there is a thing that's called, we say hedges. So these are words, hedges are words, hedges are phrases and these are expressions used when we are not sure what we are saying is correct or complete because we are not sure. When we are not sure, suppose when you say as far as I know, it means that I am not sure. I don't know about that, but I'm saying that as far as I know, so that can be true, that can be false, then I'm not sure, but, now again, this is the same with the situation and we have to face this, and these are called hedges because we are not sure about it. We are not, uh, we cannot say about anything about sh surety, that it is correct, it is complete or not, then we use this type of term, that as far as I know, as far as I think, as well as I feel, uh, as far as I observe, so these are the expressions which are used uh, with reference to hedges, so and it is also a part of discourse analysis. And then uh, the next uh, thing is called implicatures. Implicature means additional meanings conveyed by a speaker. 
let us have a look at this example there are two uh, persons who are talking to uh, uh, each other one is john john is asking lark are you coming to the party tonight it means that there is a party at that night and john is asking a question and the answer is from lark i have got an exam tomorrow no there is no logical connection between what john is saying and what lark is saying john is talking about party coming to the party at that night and lark is talking about exam and that is going to be held tomorrow no there is no logical connection but there is still existing a connection between them and these there are hidden meanings what does it mean it means that john is asking uh, asking lark about his plan uh, to of coming to the party and says i've got an exam tomorrow it means that what are the hidden meanings in this sentence hidden meanings are that lark will not come to the party because he is going to be ready or he is going to prepare is for himself for an examination that is going to be held tomorrow no the this knowing of the hidden meanings is called implications then there is a schema schema is a general term for knowledge structure in memory for specific things for specific things specific things means that all those things which are uh, important for example there are markets their names they are important for us there is a supermarket there is a you know market there it can be there can be any other market that is very important and we have to keep in uh, mind the names then there are hospitals names of hospitals names of schools names of colleges names of different institutions it means that all those things which are specific of their nature we will have to keep in mind and this is called schema and then there is uh, the, the so next one is scripts knowledge structure and memory for series of an action knowledge structured knowledge there is knowledge about what that is in mind about series of action what type of action for example going to the doctor going to the doctor this and this happened and then flying a kite while flying a kite this happened then after cooking a food while cooking a food it mean that there was a work that was in progress that was going to uh, be uh, happened at that time going to the doctor flying a kite cooking a food so these are called scripts because this is also about the knowledge which is a part of uh, memory for a series of actions so difference between both these is that it is about a series of action and schema is about uh, the general knowledge that is in our mind but about specific things then uh, the last thing with reference to uh, this conversation analysis is background knowledge bring the knowledge mean that when we uh, talk to any person we assume uh, before that that this person must be aware of uh, so many things like this and that so when we think about this thing that uh, that person must be so that is called background knowledge or we have to face so many situations and when we have to face so many situations so in order to understand the real situation we keep in use we keep using or we have background knowledge about that and that kind of knowledge is our aware from with reference to our awareness from the situations from people from circumstances from systems so that background knowledge helps us in understanding the meanings of that conversation so this is all about discourse analysis and discourse analysis mean that we are going to understand the meaning beyond the sentences it is a language beyond the sentence mean that meaning which are hidden meaning then all these things are part of uh, discourse analysis and two things are very much important with reference to discourse analysis that we are going to we here we have to have the analysis of written material and at the same time of the uh, material that is not written that is in the form of a, a conversation a written material can be text uh, this can be analysis of a text and it can also be analysis of a written material and where a discourse analysis is concerned in our day to day life we can keep in mind this discourse analysis and it becomes easy for us to understand not only others but we are also in will be in the position to understand ourselves and our intentions in the best manner after having a discourse analysis even of our own conversation and of our own texts